Hi guys, I'm the Biking Squirrel, and today I thought I'd do a video that I said I'd do a very long time ago, which is basically to update my self-filming uh, skills, sort of tips and tricks guide. So I'm gonna try and keep it pretty short, just go through some of the basics. And uh, some of you are thinking, why would you want to do self-filming? Well, I do self-filming because I think it's awesome. I like making something fun and cool. But it's also pretty good for training. You know, you can see how your riding actually looks, and you can see what you're doing wrong, if you're doing something wrong, and you can see how to improve your riding. And it's also good, the actual act of filming is good because you're sessioning stuff all the time. And it really, you know, you can push yourself and you can really learn how to ride one particular thing really well. And then you can link it all together and make a full line. So I'm loose, loosely gonna split these tips into sort of filming trips and editing tips. I mean, editing is an important part, but it's less, perhaps less important. In terms of filming, composition is really important to make it interesting. It's gonna start with the photography rule of thirds. So basically this is just when you split your frame into sort of three parts basically. So I don't always necessarily use this, but I use it as a starter when I'm thinking about how I'm gonna compose my shots. It's essentially just using negative space to sort of create interest uh, for the subject. Composition is perhaps more important for self-filming than it is for filming someone else, because when you're filming someone else, there's typically camera movement which creates interest into itself, whereas when you're filming yourself, you have to create the interest in the actual composition of the image. And then the second most important thing for filming is you've really got to mix it up. You've got to have shots from all different angles and from different sides of the trail. So what I like to do is I like to have shots going up the hill and then shots going down the hill and then shots going across the hill. But I also like when I'm having shots across the hill, it's important to have different sides of the trail because then the uh, rider is going from this side to that side and then he's going from this side to that side. It can really help to improve the interest created. So in addition to going up the hill, down the hill, across the hill and all that, you also want to mix up going close to the trail and further away from the trail. And also, if you have a variable uh, sort of zoom lens, you can also go close and then zoom out and have a wide angle shot, or you can go far away and have a close zoomed in shot. And these things are all giving slightly different looks. What I like to think of it as is the wide shots or the, the zoomed out shots. They are the sort of slower shots, and they're quite nice, you know, if you're having a change of sort of scenery or something, they're quite good. Um, the close shots are much more fast paced because the rider's going across the frame, but there's less trail in the frame, so they go faster. One thing that I've seen quite often is either overloading on nature shots or definitely overloading on sort of setup intro shots. Um, sometimes it can work, sometimes, you know, if you've got an interesting intro, it can work. Sometimes it's just 20 seconds of someone putting on their gloves and it just gets a bit boring. So if you're gonna have setup shots, make them interesting, have different angles and keep it pretty short, you know, a few seconds tops. And if you're doing nature shots, you know, make them interesting nature shots or at least like introductory, say scene changing nature shots. And then finally, the last filming tip, which is really a riding tip is basically I wouldn't bother filming if you're not really keen, like, you really got to go for it. If you're not pushing yourself your hardest, you can really push yourself, then why bother? You really got to go for it, and you really just got to nail it every time. Um, yeah. And now to briefly touch on editing, um, I mean, it really comes down to keeping your cuts super short because you don't want any dead air. Basically, you want negative dead air. You want, you want the rider to be partially in the frame when you cut. And that just means that it's like there's no point where the rider isn't in the frame. The other thing is, it's kind of it's half filming, half editing, because you want to try and create a continuous story. So when you are filming, you have to have some foresight of where you're coming from, where how it's all going to link together. Sometimes I definitely don't have much foresight of how it's going to link together. Sometimes it's obvious because you're just moving down an existing trail, and you can make it look like it's all one, you know, almost all one shot, or well, not almost all one shot. And you can make it look like it's all one trail. Sometimes you have bits and pieces from all over, but you can still make it look like it's one trail. Um, it just comes down to sort of judgment and careful editing. One of, the ways, one of the key ways you can do this is having shots looking up the trail and then shots looking down the trail, but cutting so that it's on the same side of the trail and you cut so the rider comes past the camera. You can definitely make it look fast and you can definitely make it look like it's almost like a continuous shot. There's other things of course that are important like music and if you're 
really arty, you can do colour correction and sort of grading and all that sort of things. I'm not really going to touch on that because I mean it's all personal preference if you want to do that kind of stuff. Music is always like a bit controversial on bike videos. Sometimes you're really successful and everyone likes it, but it's very rare. One of the things you can really do with music is you can sync your sort of shots to the music. That can really improve the pace and the sort of impact of the shots. So if you have a shot where you come blasting past the camera and that's where the crescendo of the music happens, that can really improve um, sort of the feel, I guess. Um, I like to play around the black quite often, you may have seen. <laughs> There's a big sort of ongoing thing where everyone likes raw videos. Um, of course, I did my own. I've done, well, in fact, I've done more than one of my own. So for raw videos, my main recommendation is uh, make sure you fade your audio. Otherwise, it can be really rough when you switch shots. Um, but basically, you know, boost those audio levels, even on like any kind of camera. Like bike noises normally sound pretty good. So you know, fade the fade, fade, fade the tracks, and you can have something really cool. And so, in my one of my previous videos, I talked about all the kit that I use. But you don't really need any special kit. What you really need is a tripod. And you can, even if even if you don't have a tripod, you can still balance your phone against the tree. Um, I mean, one of the main main issues is perhaps with self filming is that you use up a lot of memory because you can set up the camera, running up, doing the bit of trail, and coming back down. So you end up with a lot of excess footage. But um, basically, any camera, you mean, you can get out there and get filming. Uh, DSLR will give you a lot more freedom to focus exactly where you want, zoom in and out wherever you want, and have you know expensive audio solutions. But it's not necessary. You can do anything with like a tiny little iPhone camera and you can really create some really cool videos. So I hope you can take some of these tips out into your own videos and I'd love to see more people make their own videos. You wanna care about the things that I have said before